what is empathy? So what does it look like? Uh, secondly, why does it matter? So why should we care about empathy? And then the last piece is around how can we actually exhibit em empathy as leaders within our organization. So there's some very compelling research that's, that's emerging, some from the University of Ottawa, that suggests that being ignored is more psychologically damaging to us than being berated publicly. Now whenever I share that, there are a lot of affirmative head nods. So I want to ask you, why? When we're being berated, at least we matter. So as human beings, we have a primary need to connect and build community. And so at least, even if it's all negative attention, the fact that I'm being berated shows that my input mattered enough to create a reaction. When people report back on being disrespected, 94% get even. <laughs> That's all. And whenever I share that, I see people going, yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah, we do. What did you say? <laughs> when are you retiring? <laughs> I sense that had a special kind of meaning. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. This is so fun. <laughs> and so there's a big shift, and it's much more cognitively demanding. Again, what was really interesting, they also looked at creativity. So what was the level of creativity within these groups? And to me, what was fascinating was the metrics that they used. So they identified or they looked at the number of ideas that were produced by these groups, as well as the quality of the ideas as rated by an external group of evaluators who had no idea from which group these ideas came from. And what they found was those that were in the Gordon Ramsay style, of team problem solving, they produce significantly fewer ideas, and the ideas that they produce were rated as significantly lower in terms of their creative value. <music> Knowledge, what word? Trust. Trust. Oh, wow, I love how that was all said simultaneously. That was great. <laughs> how many groups had zero? <laughs> Round of applause for the zeros. This is your loudest and proudest moment of your life to be a zero. I've done this exercise thousands of times and 95 to 98% of the team score zero. How many of you, when you were sharing your lists back and forth, you're like, oh... Integrity. <laughs> <laughs> Ethics. <laughs> Civility. Respect. They question their assumptions constantly, not because necessarily they're wrong, it's just because it's a smart thing to do. Just because we've always done it this way is not an answer for continuing on the path forward. So they routinely will say, so what other ways could we do this? Are any of our assumptions out of date now irrelevant because of the change in context in which we're operating? the secret to success of, of teams and they found that number one the number one predictor of team success was psychological safety so psychological safety essentially entails that I feel free to share my perspective my ideas without fear of reprisal without fear of it becoming negative a personal attack now this doesn't mean that there isn't constructive conflict because I think that's also important to recognize as well you can have civil disagreement you can have profound disagreements on ideas. It's how we voice those differences of perspective. Uh, the danger in communication is the illusion that it's been accomplished. And the final quote, which I think you should get a prize if you say it three times fast, I know you think you understand what you thought I said, but I'm not sure you realize that what you heard is not what I meant. <laughs> 
and empathy enables you to understand what the needs of the external environment are, what your stakeholders are looking for. And so when you're making a decision, it's not only about you. You're actually considering the impact of your decision on your team, on your organization, on the community that you serve, on your clients.